If you have any questions or concerns about this week's episode, please call or text producer Dan at 778-288-9255. Start the party, Dan. It's time to turn it up. We're getting crazy, going wild, talking nasty stuff. Dude scrolling outside, but it's up to fire. Boom, rose, mad puff, sticking up the replies. We don't want to go to school. We don't want to get a job. We, we just want to get online and get our asses blocked. blocked. We don't follow the rules. We do whatever we want. It's fun party on my chest like we're tweeting the duck. Quack. Hello, friends, idiots, and friends who are also idiots. Welcome to your favorite podcast about social media and rejection. It is Block Party. This is episode number 260. I'm John. I'm Stefan. And with us is a fantastic guest, a returning guest to the program. Another, a second straight week of an in-studio guest here in Calgary, Alberta, Canada. Very funny comedian. He has a show in two days from now. I had to think about when this fucking episode is coming out. He has a show in two days from now in Vancouver at the Mountain. Alistair Ogden is here. Hi, Alistair. Hello. Thank you for having me. Thank you for thank you for coming back on the show. You're here in Calgary. Yes. Yeah. Ple- pleasure. This is your first time in Calgary. No, I've been here before. This is my first time in Calgary since uh since I went viral in Alberta. <laughs> oh yeah, right. Yeah. You're like uh, Alberta people hate you or whatever. I mean, yeah, mostly small town Alberta people seem to hate me. But... What uh, can you, uh, you know, for our listeners who maybe weren't on the viral wave, what yeah, what sure. uh, what happened? What did you what did you do to piss off my my new fellow <laughs> provincial? Maybe I should get pissed off. Oh, they're the provincial now, John. Interesting. <laughs> what? I was ma- I was I was saying you were using the word provincial as like an insult. They're my provincial, like they're my people. No, I know, but I was saying, like, oh, they're so provincial, like they're they're lower, you know, they're lesser than. Mm. Dan, you know? if you want to cut that out, you can. Alistair, <laughs> uh... can you edit it so John laughed at it? <laughs> <laughs> and I will not be doing yeah. either of those. Put okay. that laugh back yeah. in the. Uh, uh, okay, so what what happened? You did you you did a joke about Alberta or something, right? Sort of, yeah. Basically, it was just this clip. Uh, like there, I, I did a show um, in uh, in Slave Lake, like in the spring, mm. and, and a town shouldn't be called that. Exactly, and yeah. that's kind yeah. of what my joke was about about how that's kind of an embarrassing name for a town. And I filmed this clip that I filmed at the Yuck Yucks in Toronto posted that where it was sort of like i i said i asked if there's anyone from alberta some guy was like yeah and i said you know you have a town called slave lake and he went it's actually great slave lake (laughs) (laughs) thank you for the help and i was like maybe don't correct me on that (laughs) maybe don't even if that is right um but no they have a great slave lake is in uh the northwest territories actually oh okay there's lesser slave lake and then there's a town called slave lake so Mm, okay but, uh, and all that is is probably yeah it's probably due weird. for it probably due for a change yeah and so I have a joke about like basically it's just me being embarrassed to admit that I went to Slave Lake to a, a black friend that's asking me where I went on tour that's what the joke is about it's mostly the the premise is that I am uncomfortable talking about it right because you know, you're not, very white yes yeah. and I'm me too <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh, but it's not it's not explicitly making fun of Alberta really. It's kind yeah. of lightly poking fun, but uh, it went sort of first. It went kind of hate viral on uh, Facebook, which you can imagine, <laughs> can imagine the type of people like watching. you posted on Facebook or someone found it and put it on well, like a on it on like TikTok or originally or Instagram or well, I posted on Instagram and then Instagram does that thing where it sort of automatically shares to Facebook. Oh, right. option. And uh, this was the first time that this has happened where it specifically went viral on Facebook um, before it even went viral on Instagram or TikTok or whatever. Um, but yeah, it went on, it ended up going viral on all three. Uh, and there was just a lot of like, uh, you know, car truck profile pictures mm-hmm. on me. A, somebody called me a dweeb. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of cool. Yeah. Yeah. They said, yeah. Hey dweeb, your jokes are corny. That was what they said. <laughs> um, but a lot of people saying like, Oh, it's not actually named after black slaves. It's named after the slavey first nation and all this stuff. We're the, they're Albertan. So they don't call it uh first nation, but right. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. We know yeah. the word. Um, but, yeah. uh, yeah, and so I, I did kind of like, I think I actually knew this beforehand, but uh, it's kind of complicated where they're called the Slavey First Nation because the Cree First Nation used to capture and enslave the Dene First Nation. And right. then white people showed up and were like, we're going to call you the Slavey First Nation. Oh. And they're okay. like, they're like, uh, <laughs> don't maybe don't. Yeah, I don't think <laughs> and, I like that name. And they're like, we, we already named two lakes in a town after you. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah. you 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 by virtue of this joke going viral, you had to learn 
Canadian history. Yeah. Like, this is the worst part of this. Why did yeah. I have to, I had to read a book. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Did it all, everyone was like, everyone was like, do your research, do your research. They love, Albertans love to telling people to do their research. Yes. People can't even spell the word bibliography. I love, when, comedi- I love when comedians do research. You know? <laughs> yeah. That always I'll, makes their jokes better, I feel like. I'll do research for a joke. I mean, come on. Well, yeah, but you're like a teacher and like a nerd and stuff. So. <laughs> yeah, I'm a dweeb. <laughs> you're yeah. a dweeb. I did. Did you guys? Do you guys remember when nerds uh, came out? Like the candy nerds came out yeah. with dweebs. Those were so good. Were those the bigger nerds? Yeah, they were like bigger and they were sour. You might be too young for this, Alistair, but it was like, uh, yeah, it was like a bigger, sour nerd, and they were so good. And they just really never caught on. Was there was there also yeah. a nerds? candy type that was like even smaller nerds oh may- maybe yeah was see, there? I'm, oh these were so yeah plump soft sweet that's what that was how they advertised dweebs and then, okay. then they make even bigger even more sour nerds and they're called cucks <laughs> <laughs> i would have eaten those for sure <laughs> Uh, yeah, these look, I mean, I'm just seeing the boxes again and I'm like, oh man, I want so, these. So so it looks like maybe they still make them. Yeah. So there's sour nerds. Nerds rope, obviously, uh, mm-hmm. is like the gummy string or whatever. Nerds rope. Yeah. Nerds, nerds rope, rope is what yeah. I call it when I come. Dwe- <laughs> oh, dweebs are now discontinued. Oh, are they? Um, yeah. They were a larger version of, of nerds. Yeah. Um, really nothing for the nerds rope, eh, Stefan? C- well, well, I mean, that was pretty I, good. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's you know, I, yeah, you saw your you saw your opportunity there. There was a mm. nerd cereal. Mm, that sounds bad. I don't know mm. about that. It, there, there are dweebs on eBay. So, like, are they just like oh, expired? I, I think those are really expired because it are says they? it was like an early '90s thing. Well, so. yeah, I remember them in early '90s, but these look like updated boxes. Oh, maybe they brought them back. I don't know. But they got lemonade and apple, orange and cola. We did grape, um, and rube, grape and blueberry, watermelon and cherry. We did a candy tier list, like a Halloween candy tier list on Golf Kings. And I think overall we did a pretty good job because it like whenever, you know, there's like the tier list website, like tier maker or whatever.com where you can like click and drag all the stuff. And like it's it's got all these like pre-made lists and you can you can drag stuff on there. And we did like an American Halloween candy one. So there's a lot that I didn't know, but I think overall we did a good job. But I think we had nerds as... I like nerds. Ah, I think we had it as like a B, maybe. Yeah. Which is like that's decent, fair, but that's it's like fair. not like crazy. But nerds good. rope, I would say, is an A. I've never had nerds rope. Oh, it's really good. Yeah. Have you had nerds rope, Alistair? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, st- I'm still not over the name. That's yeah. The name is. Yeah. <laughs> it's really good. It's like a soft. It's kind of like a soft licorice, and then there's yeah. nerds, nerds kind of around like all it. around it. Yeah. I um, mean, Stefan, I-, I assume you figured out the dweebs were dweebs are discontinued from the Wikipedia page. Yeah, and right. if you had just uh, read one sentence later, it said they were discontinued after only oh. a few years on the market before making a return to the European market in 2022. You stupid fucking wow. Girl. Okay, hey, fair enough. Okay, so that's I guess where the eBay dweebs uh, are. Coming so I'm from. on I'm on the list of spinoff products, and it it says dweebs now discontinued. So it doesn't say the European thing, but. You're on the I was just on the page for dweebs. For dweebs, yeah, I didn't That's click what I on the actual. You would do. I figured you'd go to no, the page no, no, about no, dweebs. I should have realized because the box that they Sad. displayed looks pretty new. The watermelon and cherry box. Yeah, that's what so. I'm saying. That's why I thought, oh, they must have yeah. brought it back. No, no, you're right. I mean, looks good. I got, I've got to get some. I'm maybe we should get, get some, some on eBay, eBay right? I'm gonna why not? Order, I'm going to order some dweebs. Yeah. So, do you feel hated in Alberta, Alistair? Can you feel the uh, Can you feel the resentment now that you're here? I'd say not in like the big cities, not in Calgary. Okay. Edmonton, but you, you know? think like I think if I did go back and do a show in Slave Lake, it would be tense for real because no one really no one talks about their town. Like I think specifically, it did go viral in their town. I got yeah. DMs from people saying that this is like tearing our community apart. Oh my <laughs> what? god! <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm going to DM from someone on TikTok um, basically saying like, you know, this is so bad for our town. I can't believe you're making this joke, all this stuff. And I'm not kidding when I truly like you can watch the joke on my social media. Like it is a very tame joke. In my yeah. It's not. And it's not like you I've seen it and it's not like you're saying the town is bad or yeah, exactly. it's like sucks or whatever. You're just yeah. saying it's like an awkward situation to yeah. be explained. Yeah. Yeah. You don't, do you even really say like you got to change the name? I feel like you don't even really say that. No, I think actually sometimes when I tell that joke, I I do. But I don't think I did because he said the great slave lake thing. I was like, just riffed on that. Right. Instead, but yeah. Um, yeah, it's uh, so you got to go. 
You got to go and do a show for the town. <laughs> well, like, yeah, you got to do like a Johnny Harris still standing, spend like a week in yeah, Slave Lake, film it, hang out with these people. Well, the thing is, I did do that joke for them when I got there. Like, I did it for the people. Right. That's how show. it started. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, this is, you know, just a fun little on the road joke. And then I, the reason I posted it, because I was like, I'll probably just never tell this joke again. You know, yeah. it, doesn't, I mean, it doesn't make me make any sense for me to tell this joke like six months or a year after I actually went there. Right. So I was like, oh, I'll just retire it. And then it became this whole online phenomenon. Um, but I got some more material out of it. Now, now I do. I have a whole follow up about all these insane comments and. Uh, little little Alberta hot takes and stuff. I love so. that. Wow. I did. A, I have a. I have a joke where I reference the town Hundred Mile House in BC yeah. on my album, <laughs> and uh, I got interviewed by the Hundred Mile House newspaper. <laughs> uh, and like the guy, I don't think he was. I don't think he really cared about the joke. Like I just don't think he cared about me in general. Yeah. Like he seemed very like, why am I talking to this guy? <laughs> Love but he it was like there was definitely a bit of an attitude and he was sort of like the one question he asked that i thought was really funny was was because yeah in the joke i'm basically i'm talking about how i performed in hundred mile house which if you don't know it's like a very small town in bc and it's named hundred mile house because it was a hundred miles from the original fur trading post so again, I had to do research. Yeah. Right. So because because when you drive up there, they have a bunch of blank mile houses, which I never knew. So I went up there for the first time and you'll drive there and then it's like 84 mile house, 88 mile house, 100 mile house, 104 mile house like that. Oh. But 100 mile house is the only kind of like actual town. And I do a joke about how I did a charity gig there and there was a silent auction at the gig and the prize that went for the most money was a dump truck full of gravel. Uh, I'm just like saying that there's like <laughs> yeah. a real difference between when you do shows in a small town versus a big town. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and then, yeah, so he, so he, anyway, he's asking me about this joke and I'm like, it's true. Like I did this specific show, blah, blah. And then he was like, do you think you'll ever come back to hundred mile house? Like you, like I was going to be scared to, or like, <laughs> no, I, I can't go back. The dump truck full of gravel really threw me, you know, but you'd go back. I mean, I did like, uh, the, the guy who booked me, the, the promoter of the show, commented on the clip pretty early on and was like, don't lie, you loved it here. And I was like, yeah, no, for real. I had a good time. I'd, I'd be down to come back. It was a fun show. Um, and I DM'd him being like, you know, I actually would be down to come back if you're into it. Ghosted me. So, wow. Yeah, that's wow. fucking brutal, dude. Yeah. I mean, I imagine like, I don't know. I feel like it is the most like, flack or whatever that they've got that he's gotten embroiled i would imagine he's just like a bit scared about i feel like i'm i guess i guess i'm a controversial figure there now so <laughs> dude it would be so funny if you went there and they just have like an effigy hanging of you in the town <laughs> square so that you're like whoa it's way worse than i thought it was <laughs> yeah yeah so i don't know i don't know we'll see well, well someone's got to take over for johnny harris soon so maybe <laughs> he's getting he's getting pretty old so. He does this. He's the CBC show or whatever. Where yeah, does, still uh, standing. Yeah, Have you ever watch that thing? I don't think so. No, it is. Some clips, but... It's the most Canadian yeah. show. It's bizarre. It honestly. seems quite Canadian from what uh, I've seen clips of it. I think Johnny like... Harris was a very funny stand-up comedian, and then he basically gave up his entire career to do this CBC show called Still Standing. And what they do is they fly him to a random small town in Canada. And then he spends a week in the small town and they film him like meeting people like, oh, the, the industry in this town is lumber. So then they show him like meeting the lumber captain or whatever they call so the lumber captain, the lumber captain, you know, the guy, the boss of the lumber yard or whatever the yeah. fuck, you know, the lumber and captain. It, yeah. yeah, the lumber captain. They'll go out. They'll show him how to chop wood, whatever, blah, blah. So. And then at the end of the show, because he's been there for a week, he does a stand up set about the town. But it's like often very inside jokes. Like it'll be like, because he's from Newfoundland too. So he'll right. be like, or, or the Maritimes will be like, saw so fucking met Mark this week. Uh, <laughs> boy, he's a real firecracker, eh? And everyone loses their. Like, yeah! That's a great, that's a great bit. I think that's a great idea. Yeah, I like it, that. I mean, it's a very Canadian show. It's super it's Canadian. basically like they took the Rick Mercer field report and turned it into a whole, into a whole show. A whole right. show. Yeah. yeah. Pretty smart, I guess. Yeah. It's pretty, I mean, it's been going. Is it still, go, it's still going though? Because oh, I remember yeah, seeing yeah. ads for it like 15 years ago. Oh whatever, yeah, it's still so. going. Yeah. Wow. Um, ne they've never stopped. I, I just found this on my desk. It was like under 
some stuff, but um, it's from Download Chicken. Do you remember the stickers we got from Download Chicken, where it yeah, looks like uh, we Tom? Yeah, it looks like a porno site logo. Yes. And now that time. we we have the we're doing the video episodes, I'm going to hold this up, but it really does look like um, it does look like a porno. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he's nice. really yeah. quite horny. That's a know? horny chicken. Yeah. 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 They his name would be like Mister Chick. Or like Mr. Chicks with I think like it might be three like, X's and it he's might be this... like big big rooster dot com or something. Yeah, right? that's and good. Then... I just mean the mascot's name. Oh, the name because there's yeah. like you know porno chicks on the website. Sure, so he's like Mr. Chicks. Mr. Chicks. Yeah, that's good actually. With like three like X's. Mr. Chicks um, with three X's. Yeah. I I want to ask you guys about uh, a specific candy which I was just looking up and it I, I can't tell. I feel like this wasn't a Wonka candy, but maybe it is. But it's uh, Runts. Loved runts back in the day. Now, run. See, th- so this is going back to the tier list thing. This is sort of the mm-hmm. problem with the tier list is that sometimes you almost need to do like a sub tier list, right? Because I I like runts too, but then there's like a couple of them are like kind of bad, right? You know, it's the same thing with like oh, Starburst or any sort of like multi flavor thing where right sometimes usually the bad it's ones, the lemon or the lime is well, usually the in worst. this case. I feel like the most hated one is the banana, probably right. But oh, I kind oh, of did runs have a banana. Runs had the banana. They oh, have oh, I would uh, love that. banana, oh. orange, strawberry, green apple, and uh, grape. Actually, I'm grape is probably the worst one. <laughs> I'm this is incredible. I'm on the Wikipedia page for runs, and they have, I guess, some <laughs> Wikipedia editor is like a candy obsessive and has pictures of the runs lineup as of 2017, and it's like lined up on like a uh, like a white sheet of paper mm-hmm. or background and then the 2007 lineup with like a ruler for scale <laughs> uh and that was so now it's banana orange strawberry green apple grape 2007 was banana orange strawberry pineapple and mango oh and then he has the lineup from the late 90s somehow that would have been my that would have been my lineup <laughs> which was <laughs> lineup of runs. cherry banana orange strawberry watermelon and blue raspberry and then um, I feel like I remember there being lemon and lime ones. And then he has one from 82 somehow. Like he just has like an old. So, oh, you know what? I'm thinking of a different thing. Which one are you Runs thinking are the of? fruit shaped candies. Right? Runs are the fruit shaped ones. And they're the ones yes. that are in those like weird bulk candy vending machines that are yes, like a quarter yes, or whatever. Yes. Oh, I was thinking of, I actually think they're called punks. And they're, oh. they were kind of like sweet tarts, but Let's they see. were like the shape of like punks. I think they're called punks. Punkies? Punkies? No, I don't think that's right. I would know the box if I saw it. I'm trying to think of what they're called. Why why is every candy named by a dominatrix? (laughs) (laughs) Punkies was a candy sold by Willy Wonka. Uh, Is that the one I'm thinking of? They were small, oval in shape. Uh, Yeah, that's exactly what I'm thinking of. Yeah, punkies. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. Wow. Ugly, tangy, speckled candy bites. Yeah. <laughs> Just calls but, them ugly. I love they, those, they make. Su- I think Wonka makes sweet tarts as well, I'm yeah. pretty sure. Yeah, these so were very similar to sweet tarts, but they had... The way they did it was the... Um, it had like a thick sugar on the outside of it. So you right, get so it had like kind, the so granules. Like mouth, basically. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's like, hey, do you like sweet tarts? But you want your mouth to bleed? We hey, do we have the candy for so, you? So, so where do you stand on and and Alistair? I, I mean, and Dan too. Where do you guys stand on runs? Like, are they? Do you like them okay. or you don't like runs? Okay, I'm, yeah, I'm no, I'm not a fan either. Kind okay. of chalky, right? They are sort of chalky. I mean, I I I think they're not. I'll fuck. I'll, I'll fuck with runs. I don't. I mean, you you that's do. That's the wrong way to phrase that. Your, your baseline, but you, but you, as I'll, like, eat, I'll eat runs. Yeah, that's probably not good either. You I are like, like a, you're a candy guy though, right? I'll, so I'll your baseline is like. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I am a candy guy. Yeah. 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 I, I recently tried um, candy corn for the first time. For and? the first time. Yeah, for the first time. Now this candy Weird. corn, I feel like candy corn gets a bad rap, and I think, I think hating it is sort of like. I said this on the stream, but I think it's sort of like a Reddit thing to hate candy yeah, corn. Yeah, I got that. I mean, it mostly just tastes like icing sugar. Really. That's all it is. It's yeah. just, I mean, it's fine. I, I, I would say I like candy corn, but the hatred it gets is like, it's too much. It's not deserved, fair, in my fair. opinion. That yeah. makes sense. John, I, do you like it? I, yes. And I, I feel like, I, again, I'm not buying it. No, 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 no. But if it's there. It, but if someone has it, I'll, I, I'll And I did I'll once buy a huge bag of it and eat most of it. And yeah. that was it. Like See, much. I feel like I couldn't do that. I feel like they're best done like you have two or three pieces like three days apart. I, I think they're kind <laughs> of nice. I, like it. I think they're kind of nice if you got like a Halloween like cupcake or something. 
and oh, they're with as like, like a little piece of candy corn on the top. Yeah, oh, right. As like, like a little a, decoration like a chair or something. Even. Yes, right? that's actually I think really that's, good. I would that's love kind of that. nice. Yeah, I I think like it's so performative. The hate it gets though. I think I'm 38, and yeah. I feel like all I lived in the era where like you just got bad Halloween candy. You like, just get loose just, candy, right? You well sometimes, but in like a just, little baggie or something. The worst was the paper bags that were stapled shut. Yes, and you get some <laughs> shitty gummies <laughs> in there. Some like yeah. nondescript candy. You don't remember yeah. these? Out. How old are you? I'm 28. 28. Yeah, so I'm 10 years older than you. So that's yeah. We're in a different zone. We're in a different I zone. I remember at one point uh, when I was I must have been like eight or nine or something, maybe even younger. There was a house that was giving out these like bags of glitter or something like that it wasn't even candy it was like it was just some very like witchy looking woman my mom was like super suspicious of her she was just giving out these like yeah it seemed like some kind of like uh uh what would a what would an actual witch give you you know (laughs) yeah (laughs) right right the 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 magic dust yes yeah, like magic dust yes. with a, a what you would call like a talisman in it or something yeah yeah I remember the white bag because I think it had like a clown on the front maybe I'm thinking of like ones where I'm thinking it was of. like a little paper bag it almost felt like a loot bag you would get yeah, after like a, a birthday waxy, party like a waxy white bag it, oh yeah I think this one had like a ghost or something on it or like right. some spy it's some just classic Halloween stuff and it may have been like purple and orange and you know but Halloween what I'm, colors what I'm saying though is that mm-hmm. um like I grew up in a Halloween era where it was like not a foregone conclusion. You'd get a chocolate bar. Oh, like you absolutely. could, like you could go I would to get a raisins. house and it was like, if you got a fun size chocolate bar, that was actually pretty good. Yeah. It was like, yeah. Oh good. They have chocolate bars here. Cause there was, there was uh you'd get candy corn. You'd get yeah. the little caramels. Oh. Like the the caramels that you'd have just to the unwrap. individually wrapped ones, yeah. yeah, individually wrapped. They'd throw like three or four in the bag. Yeah, there was also the toffee bats. Oh, get out so of here! So like shaped yeah. like a cricket bat. Yeah, uh, you know what I'm talking about. And yeah. there was like a hard toffee on on a stick. Yep. Uh, so like you get the um the mm-hmm. little caramel apple lollipops. Yeah, but I love those. I I didn't hate those, but I would have preferred a big caramel apple fan. But all I'm saying is like I like all of that. But oh, I feel like I just okay. grew up in an era where we were trained to like, to like shitty oh, candy. shitty candy is also just as I, good as... I feel like now, I mean, obviously, we're recording this like six days after Halloween, but we still have we still have candy on the brain. But like, I think now, I feel like it would be really genuinely hard to fuck up what you're giving out at Halloween unless you're doing it on purpose, right? Like, I think back then, there probably were... Like, I don't, I don't remember the past few years going to the store around Halloween time and seeing a big bag of rockets. You know what I mean? I feel like Mm. those are harder to find now. Maybe you have to go to like a drug store or something to get them or like a dollar store maybe. But like if you're at like a Safeway or, you know, wherever, even like London drugs, you're going to a drug store. um, It's going to just be like name brand, like solid chocolate bars. Right. So I feel like kids today, they're fucking woke pussies. You know, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, those spoiled little, those spoiled little runs. Uh, uh, yeah, it's uh, definitely I, when kids came here last week. You know, you'd look in their like bag or pail as they were like handing it out, and yeah, yeah. you didn't see, you didn't really see any kind of sus. It was mostly just chocolate yeah. bars and chips. By the way, rookie mistake using the bucket. I feel, oh, I feel that's like. for little children. Yeah, if yeah. you're if you're like older than like six and you're using the bucket, you're you're being get fucked over. Here. You got to get a bag. I went pillowcase. Yeah. Oh, I had I mean, a couple of years where I just went full pillowcase. Yeah, that's a I'm like, I'm move. going. Yeah, why not? I'm I'm going hard. I think yeah. I had one year where I filled like three pillowcases. Like we were just uh, trick or treating uh, for like four hours. Yeah, man. But again, it was the early '90s and we didn't have the internet, so it was like, well, this is we have something to do. Yeah, that's yeah. fun. Yeah. How late did you guys trick or treat? I feel um, like I was 12 the last time. Yeah, I think by the time I was like 13, 14 ish, we were just doing like fireworks and stuff. You could have, Stefan, you could have trick or treated. Oh, I mean, easily. you know, you look like you were I, four until I fe- you were 20. I, no, I know. I feel like probably what we did was the classic like teen thing of like you go out with like fireworks to like mess around, but you have like a mask or something in case you want to go grab some candy at some point. And like, so I think. I think around like 12 or 13, right? Yeah. Um, but then at that point, it was mostly just walking around, like blowing up pumpkins, um, yeah. which is great. So, um, 
I think because uh, my family moved when I was 13. And so I would have only trick or treated in the, the neighborhood before in Burnaby. So I don't think I ever treated trick or treated after uh, in Port Moody where, yeah. Yeah. So yeah, like when I was 11 or 12, probably the last time, but my, I have much younger uh, brother and sister. So I've gone trick or treating with them and steal their candy when they come for sure. The for sure. Yeah. You got to pay the tax. Yeah. Well, cause you get you to, you know, the better candy than they do. Right. So you can pick and choose like the good candy. Yeah. I mean, I think like I was, I'm seven years older than my brother and 11 years older than my sister. Oh, wow. So holy moly. Yeah. I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be too harsh because they were like so much younger than me. It would have been yeah. kind of fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> They're like three years old. <laughs> Give me that. Yeah, I'm a 14 year old stealing from a three year old. <laughs> Can't really do that. I mean, you can stealing yeah. candy from uh, a literal baby. <laughs> were, were you guys? Because um, I feel like there's there's two types of kids around Halloween where which was me, which is you eat the candy within like the first like two or three days and it's all gone. Or my sister who would like hide the candy in the closet and keep it for like six to eight months and just eat it like, you know, once yeah, every couple of days. I definitely was not six to eight months, but I was definitely a closet, a closet guy. Yeah. And I would have it there for, yeah, I would say until Christmas, probably. I and mean, it's pretty good. Like for me, but it was gone in like two days. All the chocolate bars were gone. It's like... Oh, anything be, that could melt, I guess. Right? Yeah, it'd be like, like, well, it'd just be like, you know, you'd want dessert, but you didn't eat enough dinner or something. So yeah. you'd go and you'd be like, I guess I'll have one of my toffee bats. Uh, yeah. <laughs> my, yeah. My cricket bats, I guess. I, I had like no Ill impulse control at all. So I think I would have just eaten them or whatever. Yeah. It never really took me very long. Yeah. I was never one who, to, who saved them. Right. I'm sort of jealous of like some of the candy kids are going to be getting on Halloween now, which is like, I mean, the big one for me is peanut butter M&Ms because that's a fairly recent development. Mm -hmm. And if, if, if that was around as a kid, like that's my number one favorite with a bullet, like no question. Because that was another thing that sparked a bit of controversy was us saying that Reese's pieces are like substantially like once you have peanut butter M&Ms, there's no point in having Reese's Pieces. I don't think I've ever had a peanut butter M&M. Oh, oh my God. Those are really good. It's, they're so, they're so fucking good. It's you crazy. You gotta get some today. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. All they're, right. They're really good. Yeah. Unless you're allergic or whatever. No. But even then. Yeah. Even then, it's I'd worth say, it. I'd say push it. Great way yeah. to go out. Uh, Dan, can we see the can of chili on your desk? <laughs> Why do you want to see the can of chili on my desk? There's just, the can of chili. Thank that you. Was yeah, God, I, just, I just remember that Dan just bought chili in America a couple weeks ago. It was ago for my friend. He, he was like, "You got to get me some of this chili." So I got some chili. For it's a good, it's a good brand. It's yeah. like a specifically. Have you tried it yet? No, it's Nally is the brand. Did you okay. get? Did you, so you got some for yourself too? Yeah, but you haven't had any yet. No. Mm. You should make some. Make some. I don't, like, I don't like chili, and I think I would no? like it even less out of a can. Canned chili is not that bad, to be honest. It's better than like canned like Campbell's chunky soup or whatever. Yeah, you I don't know? eat that either. Well, no, I actually don't saying, really eat anything out of a can. What about? Must be nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's because I'm it's because I'm rich. What about That's beans? Why. What about I used beans? To eat, no, I don't like no. But I, you don't I, like you don't put canned beans into like a recipe. No, you're not I a had, bean guy. No. Interesting. Oh my god, really? Not a bean guy. Don't, there's no bean that you like. Mm, I mean, there's one bean. <laughs> okay. Yeah. The, the clip. So but, like, bad, John. <laughs> but there's two because you probably like jelly beans also. I do love jelly beans. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. So there's two. I only like two types of beans <laughs> jelly beans and the clip. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. I will be editing this out. <laughs> hey. No, you got to edit this in. Because right? people nasty. are people are always like wanting me to, you know, be a sex guy or whatever. Yeah, are they? Uh, Dan, I, I don't think, think what they're you should wanting do... you to be one. I think Dan, you just are one. I think I think what we have the opportunity to do here is like a new thing for podcasts, which is after John says whatever he just said about uh, clits or whatever, <laughs> is you just like you go like uh, like instant replay, instant replay, and then you like <laughs> slow it down, and we like analyze it. Mm -hmm. Can you do That's that? Fine. Um, I can work on. Yeah. Okay. I'll work well, here's on a clip that. of me saying, "You can use this." Instant. You can replay. see Raj. The twinkle in his eye starts to develop as soon as Stefan brings up beans. beans. We're going to see how yeah. he uses this here. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, We're going to get a like, You guys like that you know? as well? You guys like the clip too? Sure. Yeah. <laughs> well, of course, but. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, I'm sure I'd love it if I could find that. Ah, and there's a comedian right there. That's really there good go. stuff. It's like at the top. It's like pretty. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I'll show you guys. I'm rubbing her nose. <laughs> <laughs> B 
But you don't, okay, uh, but to go back, you don't like, I don't like really chili, know. you don't like, like beans. Uh, like baked beans are okay. Okay. Uh, what about yeah. refried beans? No, thank you. Oh, I love refried beans. I don't like beans really. Uh, like, Do yeah, they just not agree with you because of your IBS? Don't maybe? like green beans. I guess I like soybeans, like edamame. Okay. That's All right. pretty good. Yeah, that John's that, a soy boy. <laughs> so, yeah, I am. It's because I'm a Sex, big time soy boy. Sex boy, yeah. soy boy. Yeah. Sex boy, soy boy. Yeah. It's a good combo. Yeah, I'm not a, I'm not a big bean head. I yeah. wouldn't say other than oh, I also like Mister Bean. That's a third. That's of course, a third bean yeah. I like. Yeah, <laughs> gotta think about that for a second. Yeah, uh, I feel like Mister Bean really is universally cool now, and I feel like Mister Bean did not. There was an era where that it, there was a Mister Bean down. I feel like Mister Bean and Weird Al had like a similar. I could. I agree with that. I mean, I there think was part a of moment it, where it wasn't cool to say that Mister Bean was funny. Part of it is that Ron Atkinson is in all of those like success win memes now. Well, yeah, that's not great. So I think that maybe plays a role. Also, like you know, don't listen if there's like an interview with Ron Atkinson now. Don't listen oh, to yeah, it. It's not. It's good. not. It's kind of what you would expect from a, an yeah. older, extremely wealthy British comedian. Oh but, right, I remember seeing something about that. Yeah, yeah, not good. I mean, Alistair, you must be. Your parents are British. Like, oh, I've. Mr. Bean I watched be. the hell out of Mr. Bean. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. that was, yeah. I've seen, I've seen it all multiple times. I think oh. we own, we own the DVDs and all the, that. We would watch yeah. the Christmas special every year. I mean, it's, I mean, it's almost time to start watching it again, you know? Like, yeah. It's almost, uh, it's almost bean season. Yeah. Black, Black Adder as well was great. I don't know if you guys <laughs> yeah. watch Black Adder. I never watched was, Black Adder. It's, I probably it's should. Good. Yeah. It's very funny. Yeah. Um, but Mr. Bean, I, I also mean, loved uh, Johnny English. Mm-hmm. That was funny. That was. A it good actually movie. wasn't that bad. Yeah, <laughs> yeah was there bad. two of them? There's, there's two. Right? Johnny English. Was there a second one? Yeah, there I was. think there was. Yeah, and Mr. Bean's like holiday. That there's was two. Mis- there's that two was Mr. Feature, Bean movies. The I feature think, length right? was Mr. Bean's holiday. Is that the and... one where he he fucks up the Whistler's mother painting? I think right. Yes. No. Yeah. That, that's the first Mr. Bean. Okay. Mr. Bean's that's holidays. Just, just he goes Bean, to Cannes Film Festival. Okay. Yeah. The oh. first one is just called Bean. I think right. The first movie. Yes. Right. Yeah. This is I. I'm realizing how much I really do know about Mr. Bean. <laughs> I was gonna say you were like right I'm, on it. I'm, right I'm, on. I'm 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 locked in. I'm I'm dialed in right now. I'm in the Bean Zone. <laughs> I love being in the Bean Zone with my boys. <laughs> I'm go- I'm gonna ask my friend's AI thing to make us a picture of Mr. Bean fucking a Christmas turkey. Okay, Stefan. Because I think then, that would be that's rude. But that would be funny. We're just right? respecting Mr. Bean right now. I know I now respect him doing, too, but I'm saying what's it would your be... favorite Mr. Bean uh, sketch? Would oh you say? man, the is one it the Christmas turkey. I mean, the Christmas one is a classic. Um, the one where he's like doing the exam or whatever, and he keeps trying to copy off the guy is really good. That's really good. The one where he ends up driving on top of his car, obviously. Yeah, yeah, yeah in the in the lazy boy chair. Yeah, yeah. that's a classic too. I, I like the one at the swimming pool as well. Yeah, that's my the oh, high yeah, dive. The high, the high dive. dive's my favorite yeah. one. Yeah, yeah. yeah, isn't there one? I that, love that one. There's as like a kid. the beach or whatever, and he's like walking down the really long path down to the beach too. I think that's yes. one of them. Yeah, uh, um, I also truly. Every single time that that uh, three wheeled car falls over, <laughs> uh, you know, I love that that's I'm, his I'm enemy. I'm standing up, I'm cheering, I'm screaming. Yeah. yeah. I think yeah, legitimately, it looks like a cardboard car. <laughs> legitimately, my, I think my favorite joke from any Mr. Bean ever is from the Christmas one because, like, the payoff is so fucking good. But it's when he's like uh, at like the storefront with his, with his girlfriend and she's like pointing at like the jewelry or whatever. <laughs> And then he thinks she's pointing at like the picture frame of like the yes. other couple and then shows her that and she gets all upset. And then he's like, hold on a second. And then brings out the little like ring box and it has the fucking hook to hang up the paint. Like that's such a good <laughs> joke. God damn. That's so funny. Yeah, that's awesome. Fuck. Mr. Bean. Let's just stop this episode and just watch the watch well, some bean boys. Have we, we've talked about the Mr. Bean TikTok guy on here, right? Um, have we? I think we have. His name's like, I want to say his name is like Bean Reloaded or something, but it's like oh, yes. he's he's like it's a like Mr. Bean Reborn. I think, Bean Reborn on because I think we've seen him on. Is it, we did, it's a guy that tries to replicate the skits. Or no, it's the... a guy who just does Mr. Bean impressions, and it's like not horrible, I guess. But he uh, he does like Twitch streams where he's like playing GTA as Mr. Bean. Oh no, um, don't like and, that. And but I think we've seen him on. Uh, we did a cameo episode, and I think he came up on the cameo episode. Oh, that would make sense. He's quite popular on TikTok as well. I mean, I'll, I'll, I'd watch it right now if I, we have some. I but. did watch a video essay about how the Mr. Bean YouTube channel is just insane. It's like all, like somebody has clearly like licensed the Mr. Bean. I don't know, image or something like that. And I guess Rowan Atkinson must be making money from this, but uh, they they truly just have the the worst animated Mr. Bean sketches of all time, constantly just posting them nonstop and all getting like millions of views from kids and stuff. 
Really? Wow. Yeah. yeah. What the fuck? There yeah. was also like the Mr. Bean like animated series that was like apparently insanely popular as well. Um, let yeah, me... I'm looking it up. Yeah. Oh let's yeah. See. Oh yeah. It is the. Oh, that's so. They have yeah, 32.4 million subscribers. I think. I mean, this this looks like some actual Mr. Bean stuff. But yeah, there, there's like a whole. Mi- okay. Yeah. yeah. Best of Mr. Bean animated. Mr. Mr. Bean, Bean at the skate that. park. That's I, what it is. Yeah. They just post constantly oh Mr. God. Bean animated stuff. I, but I why? Think what is that? It, that takes away everything that's good about I, Mr. Bean. I do think the thing with Mr. Bean that like makes him so popular yeah. is that he's like not talking, so that you like anyone, even if they don't speak English, like understands it, right? So he's like so popular internationally. Like I feel yeah, like. Yeah. You see, like on on Twitter all the time, if there's like a Mr. Bean post or something, it's a bunch of guys from like India being like, "Oh, we lo- we love you, Mr. Bean. Like, please come to India. We love you here." You know, and there's like, I think there was like a Mr. Bean like India like impersonator or something that was in the news at one point. Like, okay, I did. Makes sense. <sighs> okay, it gave Mr. Bean a pussy when I when I made. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> he looks <laughs> looks good, um, but the turkey is nowhere to be found. So I, it still needs some work. Um, we'll we'll come back to this. <laughs> We'll come back to this. Stefan. <laughs> oh my God. I'm trying here. <sighs> well, we will come back to it eventually, but for now, let's move on to our social media updates. What a fucking good segue. Now let's move on. It's time to discuss what popped up in your feed. Who are you following? What did you see? Sports or politics, tweets and skis, hot takes, and the TL of fast food freaks. It's a social media. Alistair, we always start with the guest. What's going on on your social media? Um, well, I didn't mean to do this, but I, I actually have a second clip going viral. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't mean to talk about that. Sure, uh, sure. I understand how, what your drive oh over God. here was like. <laughs> um, yeah, basically, I posted this other clip where I talk about, uh, I start doing a joke about how people in Vancouver hate Toronto. That's the premise. I, and then, I saw this clip. Yeah. 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 And then somebody interrupts me and I try to just keep the joke going and then they interrupt me again. And then I have kind of like, which is not usually the case for me, but a pretty decent like comedian destroys heckler moments. <laughs> 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 and uh, yeah, it went viral on like TikTok and Instagram and stuff. And now, now just the comment sections are, it's nicer than the Alberta one for sure. It's just people arguing back and forth about, whether or not people hate Toronto or hate Vancouver or whatever. It's all very, people are so passionate about this stuff. So it's um, kind of fun to watch. And then occasionally someone will just say something mean to me, uh, just out, out of the blue. No, no. <laughs> I hate this guy. Yeah. Someone like, oh, he has no stage presence. Somebody, somebody was like, he, he couldn't think on his feet. <laughs> and I was like, that's <laughs> what that's, I'm doing that's this all whole time. I'm doing. Did you ever watch the end of the video? <laughs> that's the thing. I do have a very like emotional response, first response to whenever I see somebody be mean to me on the internet. I treat it as though someone, I mean, I think, I think like chemically in your brain, you feel it the same way as if someone has just said it to you. So I always yeah. feel the urge to respond. I uh, yeah. only did it once or twice, but I do feel I feel like it's slowly um, corroding corroding my brain a little bit whenever I do read those comments. So mm-hmm. yeah. yeah, well, our listeners are very nice, so they're not going yeah, to be bad to say. They'll, they'll, be, nice they'll be mad at us for sure. But yeah, they yeah. always get mad at us. Yeah, yeah. I think I got over replying to people mostly. I think you just get to a point where you go like, okay, you know. You kind of have whatever, to, I whatever. Think, right? Otherwise, you know. you're just going to be doing it constantly. You're right? just going to lose your mind. But yeah, you're right. Like I do, I do get. There is a part of me though that I I get mad when, uh, or not mad, but it, it will get me when people are just like lying. Like the guy saying, like you, you can't even think on your feet. You're like, that is what I am doing. That yeah. in this thing, it's like we got a Patreon exit survey once where someone one of the options you can check off on the exit survey is just like, Oh, block party didn't deliver the number of episodes that I expected or something like that. And it's like, yeah. what are you talking about? <laughs> yeah. Literally we've had the Patreon for five years and we do like never episodes not, a month. Like, yeah. We've never not delivered on a bonus episode ever. Like yeah. there was only one time that was actually, that's oh, wrong. the sandwich there was one, one time this year where it took us a little extra. Yeah. Oh, well the chopped one too. Yeah. That was, but that was, like, that was, we just, fault, really. no, that yeah, was in the middle the of back. COVID. So. so that was fine. Yeah. No, this year we did actually, we had a a, a bonus episode that was like a, a week late. But other yeah. than that, we've never missed a bonus. We say it's three bonus episodes a month. It's been three bonus episodes a month for 60 straight months. 
And then people will be like, that they didn't do what they said they were going to do. It's like, well, fuck you. Uh, if you want to be, if you want to stop donating to the show because you hate it or you hate me, that's fine. But when people are like, ah, you're not, you're not doing what you said. It's like, no, we, we do, we are doing. Yeah, what you said. that's a great, great segue to your paywall content. Exactly. <laughs> patreoncom slash Check it out. You can get mad at me, and uh, it'll be just fine. Yeah, that that would uh, that would piss me off. So, what did you do? Like, what was the you know? Should well, we just should we play it? What I is that better than you explaining how you like own this guy? The clip? No. Well, um, well I can. I, you don't need to play the clip. I don't really like listening to myself, but I can. Uh, okay. I can show you the uh, one of the one of the comment. I also had a someone was mean to me in the comments, and I kind of um, I don't know was mean to them back, and then I, I posted on my story, and people. I, I I honestly thought I was being too mean. People on my story said that um, I was being. Just the right amount. The right amount of me. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, um, if anyone comments on on anything I do, you you're allowed to just fucking go off leash and just like yeah. fuck them up. You can say at, at some at, if someone comments on my shit and they're like trying to be funny or like they're poking at me, I'm going to tell them to kill themselves. Like you can just do that. <laughs> <laughs> so okay, so this I found it. So uh, the guy says you have like no stage presence. Come off like you're just feeling your way through insults and passing it off as comedy. And so I, I clicked on his profile, looked at him. Um, he's like a young, seems to be like an amateur filmmaker or something. He's like working on short film. All the comments on his posts are limited. So I couldn't go. Wow. <laughs> and so I responded and said, uh, is there anywhere I can watch your short films? I feel like art that comes from such a weird, sad little man might be cool to see. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Yeah, yeah. That's fine. I, I kind of went like uh, purple devil smile. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that. that's great. That's, that's good the, though, because it's like they're making fun of your art, so you might as well, yeah. kinda, you know, give it back to them. Yeah, yeah. that's like the <laughs> like one. That. That's the one thing I sort of miss. I mean, there's uh, there's a bunch of things, I guess, but that's one thing I do miss from being on Twitter. Um, is like being really mean to people who deserve it. It was so much fun to do, where you'd get some freak reply and you yeah. tweet them and just like blow them up and like. <laughs> send all your followers after them to like bully them <laughs> it's really funny to do that you know yeah, yeah. making Blue's, people like leave twitter oh my, they're just the, the, their replies are dude, filling up with fucking, all your followers the being best like, feeling in the world you. especially because like you know we're like planning this out in like a group chat too being like look look at it, like everyone's like digging up the, like the fucking best one of all time and i think i've talked about it on here before was when db found a guy who was like bragging about owning one acre of land or something and then he like looked through all his posts and it's there's like dozens of posts of him replying to roseanne and being like i want to like lick your feet i want to suck on your feet roseanne your feet are so hot you you look so you look so good i want to get like nasty oh with God. you roseanne and you can clip all this dan um and then he and then he put together like a like a little like photo collage of like all the roseanne posts and stuff and then like one post about him like owning the like the exact amount of like acreage he had which was like 0 0.97 acres and he posted like this guy's horny for Roseanne he doesn't even own one acre of land and the guy like deleted his account <laughs> <laughs> but That's it's back incredible. it came back the other day he 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 oh, brought it back, back or or like unlocked it or whatever yeah so he, he is back on there um wow. Yeah, but well, there was a big uh, a big moment on Twitter. This is going to come out in a week from now, but r as of right this recording on the November sixth, this is fresh news, Stefan. Yeah, uh, talk to me about your social media right now. Oh yeah, that's this is this is maybe, and again, a week from now, it could be even funnier. But this is this is one of the funniest things I think to ever happen, which was yeah. at Ape Fest Hong Kong, which is. <laughs> The, which is like a bored ape like music entertainment festival thing I, I can't believe that's still happening um although i think it is quite a bit smaller now and they're not getting maybe the same i finally got my ape did, did you did yeah, you get I had to wait i had to wait hey, but uh the prices you know, are down I, I finally i finally yeah. got one so we're, yeah. we're going to the moon yeah there you go um <laughs> we're, we're, it's on a rocket ship but like they had like a big like you know ape fest a couple of years ago where like you know amy schumer was there and like uh, some other like oh, musicians yeah, and stuff uh, were there it was like the big uh there was like a big hip-hop artist that performed as well <sighs> yeah, i forget who was there? they had a couple yeah. of big names though the original the original ape fest yeah so this is the most recent one and what has happened is that <laughs> at the the big event they <laughs> in hong kong they had stage lights that were like uv lights 
which is essentially very similar to just like staring into the sun. Oh my god! And yeah. it's it's a condition that's actually known as welder's eye because I think it's something that they get from like all the sparks and shit if they're like looking at it. Without it's eye like protection. if you look right at the yeah, yeah. it's so Holy bright. Shit. And I I so a lot of people, um, although <laughs> they, I mean, it's a fair amount of people. It's look, I think if. If you're having like a concert and like one person gets blinded, that's bad. But it seems like it's about 15 people right now from the statement that Yuga Labs, uh, which is the company behind the Board Ape Club, um, so they released a statement saying, based on our estimates, the 15 people we've been in direct communication with so far represent less than 1% of the approximately 2,250 event attendees and staff at our Saturday night event, which is so funny to say. It's like, well, we only... Only blinded fifteen of them out of the yeah, two thousand like, people. Why there. you guys are getting so mad at us? Less than one percent are blind. <laughs> but I, I will read some of the posts from people. Uh, this is from Crypto June seven seven seven. I woke up at four a.m. and couldn't see anymore. Had so much pain and my whole skin is burned. Needed to go to the hospital. Oh from Feld four zero one four. Anyone else's eyes burning from last night? Woke up at three a.m. with extreme pain and ended up in the ER. I saw a couple reports, but just trying to figure out if there was a common thread. Uh, this is from Crypto Burb. Uh, Adrian, uh, I, I think you would pronounce this Zadunchik, um, probably. Uh, but he's, he said, 30 hours since I woke up with severe eye burn. I visited emergency hospital and eye clinic and spent there a total of six hours. And then he had a whole thread. And this is, to me, the quintessential like crypto bro post where something like absolutely horrible and painful has happened to you. But you're still like praising the people who organized the event because that's something you see whenever like a bunch of crypto stuff. There's like a rug pull or something gets stolen where they're just like, yeah, I mean, this like bad shit happened to me and I lost all my money. But it's like not their fault, you know, like they want to like change the world and make it a better place. Right. And like, I love that attitude of like never blaming the people responsible. But I'll read this post and it's a really long post because obviously he's like a blue check guy. Uh, so he can do like the insanely long post posting, uh, this in hope that my friends suffering the same issue realize they need medical attention ASAP. Thanks for great ape fest logistics guys, Yuga labs and board ape YC incredible event and met plenty of amazing people still as have dozens of others. I've almost lost sight this night, <laughs> <laughs> this night. <laughs> yeah. I'm being taken care of by doctors now and have only good intentions writing this post to all my friends who suffer now, go get your eyes checked. You've likely most literally got your eyes burnt with UV like I did, which requires Holy medications, fuck. eye drops, eye protection, antibiotics, and specialist care. Don't ignore this health hazard. Without proper treatment, it may cause long-lasting vision impairment and other serious damage. To the organizers, for the communication and awareness reasons, it would be fair to put together an official statement with recommendations what to do. As dozens of people you care about were exposed to serious health hazards and loss of suffering, you're good guys, so it should be easy for you to recognize the seriousness oh of it. God. Much love. Just, oh, everything about it is oh, just... You guys are good guys. It's so funny. You're all just good like, guys. So you you'll keep, understand. You keep praising the guys who blinded you because they don't believe in like regulation or like actually making things like safe or making sure like it's oh my god. And then scrolling through the replies, it's less all, than one percent though, Stefan. Oh, of course, it's all blue check people mm, being yeah. like, yeah, you know, like they're doing a great job. Like uh, it's, I mean, this is what Twitter is now, which is so funny. But um, yeah, I'm just. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I saw a really funny one because some of the board apes, uh, like the the image or whatever, they're like shooting lasers out of their eyes. Yes, oh and so that people were like, "Oh, I didn't realize it was going the, the other, other way." way. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god! Which yeah, is I really think, yeah. the thing that's I mean, interesting that uh, there was another Hong Kong event like in 2017 where this also happened. It was like a different place, a different location, but it was the same thing where they had the UV lights. Um, and it's like the UV lights that are meant to like cl like clean stuff. You know what I mean? Like they're so strong that they're meant to like like sanitize stuff. And these guys were just like staring at it for like four hours. <laughs> oh my so god! Funny. Anyway, it's really, I mean, it, I'm a, I'm kind of jealous of the people who got blinded because now they don't have to look at those fucking apes. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, I think. The craziest concert I ever went to in terms of like lights and sound was sleigh bells. Yeah. And it was like right in the middle of my, when I had my vertigo, like really, really bad. So I was just kind of like getting out of that. And I went to see, it, and there was just like so many strobe lights. It was so loud. It honestly felt like I was in hell. 
Yeah. Uh, but it was like kind of sick because <laughs> Sleigh Bells music is dope and <laughs> it kind of, you want to feel like that. But you even I was. Like, you sound like the guy on Twitter right now. Like, <laughs> yeah. sucks, Thank you. Also, you guys were awesome. Thank you, Sleigh Bells. <laughs> I love you. Uh, you guys, you, and I know you're good people. Uh, they do follow me on Twitter very weirdly. They only follow like 500 people and they follow me for some nice. reason. Uh, but um, I was just like, okay, I can't look at the stage. Like, I'm just going to have to close my eyes and put my head down and just listen to the music because the lights are fucking yeah. up my vertigo and it's too much. So, I mean, maybe they're on drugs or, you know, I'm obviously, I wasn't, you know, so maybe if you're on drugs or you're drinking or whatever, you don't really realize, but you have to think at some point you'd be like, oh, it's not great on my eyes. Yeah. I, yeah, but I, I'm anyway, it couldn't happen to, you know, I hope no one dies, I guess, but like, it's, <laughs> I guess. It's, still, it's still really funny what happened. So. It's extremely funny. Yeah. It's really funny. good. Yeah. Um, okay. Well, I've got a quick little video here that crossed my, crossed my desk this morning, okay. uh, which I thought was super funny. I, I sort of knew about this from before. Um, oh, but uh, this is really like, good. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I, I feel like I've heard rumors of Bob Hoskins. Uh, not being thrilled that he was in the Super Mario Brothers movie. Um, so yeah, Bob, the the original Super Mario Bros comes out in 1993, and uh, Bob Hoskins is in the movie, and uh, he didn't realize that the that Super Mario Brothers was a video game, <laughs> and he has a really funny line about being in the movie, and it is a little quiet, Dan. So you might want to turn it up. I know when I was listening to it this morning, it was pretty quiet. I just mean like. I didn't even know it was a guy. It's my kids that told me. Well, I said, what's your next film? I'm doing Super Mario Brothers. Oh, that's the game. Oh, what? Well, yeah, here. and this is you. And I saw this thing jumping up and down. I thought, I used to play King Lear. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I God, that's so good. That's he, was, he was so such a good. fucking good actor. Oh, my God. Just perfect timing on that, yeah. too. He I is, used to play King Lear. He's <laughs> great. Yeah, he, Lear. he was he was so good. I mean, obviously, like, Roger Rabbit, you know, of course, but... Man, I mean, have you seen? Uh, well, there's no. Also, chance, I just want to know. Like, sorry, go ahead. Stephanie. I was gonna say, there's no chance you've seen this, but you should watch it if you have the chance. But it's called uh, Mona Lisa. It's like mm. a, it's like a crime movie from the '80s. I it's have really, seen it, really actually. good. Really? No. Okay. Um, <laughs> uh, it is also funny because it's like, how did he not know that <laughs> it was based on a video game? Like, it's called Super Mario Brothers. Did he not uh, already the name alone feel like? How do you like read back the whole then, script though, like, and be like, ah, this, and it's 1993, so we're already at sure. Mario 3. By oh, this. yeah. Actually, I mean, Super Mario World's already out. We're yeah. already on Super Nintendo. But I think, you know, if your games were not, it was just a thing for kids back then, right? So it's probably, he's just like, yeah, just like, you know, whatever. And then gets like the, his agents, like, they're going to offer you a lot of money to do this. And he's just like, all right, I'll do it, you know? So it's, it's possible, I think. But yeah, I mean, what a, what a line. What a great I used actor. to play King Lear. <laughs> Me too, actually, as a matter of fact. So. Yeah. Oh, and wasn't there something um, about uh, jesters in Shakespeare that someone sent us, John, oh, that we should off. read? We don't need to bring this shit up. This fucking bullshit. Some someone someone texted, texted Dan. Dan. And again, I, I've, I've said this before. If you have something to say to me, Text it to say, say it to my face. Uh, <laughs> you know, it's a lot. A lot of people are texting Dan with opinions about things I've said on the show. You know where to find yeah, me. Yeah, people really don't like you, I've noticed. Okay, well, that is, first of all, <laughs> false. Lots of people do like me. Uh, my mom, my wife. Not the people uh, who are texting me. <laughs> okay, well, Dan, that's a little bit rude. Anyway. Just being uh, honest. The, <laughs> they were talking about me talking about the jesters in King Lear. I was just saying, yes, of course, there are jester characters in many Shakespeare plays. I was just specifically speaking on characters who are actual jesters. Like the jester in King Lear is an actual court jester. Puck is not like a court jester. Yes, they are a jester character. Same as like Porter and Macbeth or what you brought up, the Tempest Tranquillo or Tronquillo. I can't even remember the name. I haven't read Everybody the Tempest has turned this off now. <laughs> Fuck you, Dan. Anyway, I don't know everything. Yes, there are more jesters than I indicated, but I was talking about court jesters. Doesn't matter. Speaking of jesters, let's move on to our block tale. What did you tweet? 
You brought receipts, Blocktail. Woo! No longer can see the post. It's a Blocktail. Woo! You probably deserved it. It's a Blocktail. All right, Alistair, you had you had a good tale for us last time, and I believe you've indicated you have another epic saga for us this time around. So uh, the floor, the floor is yours. Yeah. So yeah, last time, I mean, this is something I've I was doing uh, before. I'll, t- I'll talk to people and then post all of the conversations on my Instagram stories. Usually talking to like scammers or whoever. the 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 range has kind of broadened over the last year in terms of the people that I do talk to. And this one, uh, this was my first uh, very Toronto based. Okay. Uh, sort of block tail, I guess. Uh, so it all started. I found this actual poster that uh, was right near my house uh, where I was staying in Toronto. And it just says all across the top Hi, ladies. Try my manicure pedicure treatment. I just started this. I have no studio. I'm a respectful, semi retired, fit, healthy, clean, non smoker. Text Mr. Buccino, then the number. Then at the bottom, it says, I'm very selective who my clients are. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Pacino. Okay. So I've got a Manny Petty studio in my house. Or not a studio. No, he, he, I do he Manny has, Petty's in, in his, his house. house. In his kitchen or whatever. Yeah. Or it seems like maybe he'll come to you. I don't know. Okay. Oh, okay. Wow. Okay. Of course. So I, but I, and I'm very selective <laughs> about who I give a Manny Petty to. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and so, of course, I texted. I, well, I asked my followers if I should text. Everyone was like, definitely do it. Uh, and so I and said, So this is just like on a telephone pole in your neighborhood. Yeah. Like a printed yeah. out. Okay. Yeah, and so I texted. I said, hello, Mr. Buccino. I saw your sign. I'm intrigued. Nail emoji. And he said, who are you? Question mark emoji. I said, I'm Ali. Uh, and then sent him a photo of the ad. He said, why are you sending me photos of my ad? <laughs> <laughs> I said, so you know where I got your number from? And he said, do you not read plain, simple English? <laughs> I said, yeah, I read the sign. He said, my ad said, hi, ladies. So I, I kind of backtracked. I said, I am a lady, short for Allison. Sorry for the confusion. He said, Allie is a man's name. I said, my parents just always called me that. <laughs> <laughs> he said, and then he said, I've got so many sick, disturbed men replying, I'm tired of it. <laughs> <laughs> just said like sorry to hear that and then uh he said do you smoke what age bracket are you what background i said i'm in my 20s i don't smoke what do you mean background he goes again do you not know english background very simple (laughs) i said do you want my race he said simple (laughs) (laughs) mr (laughs) buccino i said i'm white question mark and then he said thank you for your reply i'm going past take care Wow. Uh, I said, how come? And then he said, I'm not getting good vibes. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he's right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you were pranking him. Yeah. Yeah. And um, so then I uh, like everyone was like, this is crazy. You know, people responding yeah. and stuff. Yeah. And then I think somebody tipped me onto it that uh, this is much bigger than my particular conversation. This goes a lot deeper. It's something that's been happening for a long time. Looked up uh, just like Buccino Toronto keywords or whatever. Uh, there was a uh, R Toronto Reddit post um, where somebody was looking for a walking assistant. Another it kind of like gate or it's well, this is what it says. A walking assistant wanted some pay information. And then it said, I'm a European man that is mature and respectful. I have arthritis in my right knee, but I am fit, healthy, and drama free. No gay men. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And uh, so this is like he just wanted someone to go on a walk with him? Apparently. Well, this okay. is the thing that and so I was like, oh, okay, he's doing all sorts of weird moves. And then somebody uh said that there's actually a Facebook group uh, called Tony Spotting. Uh, okay. That, and oh. so, uh, yeah, there's a Tony Spotting group on Facebook. And uh, yeah, he they said he's a very, very angry man if you think you're messing with him, all this stuff. So I, I go to the Tony Spotting Facebook group. Also, I found another one, another sign near my house that actually has a photo of him on it. Um, it's, uh, <laughs> yeah, that's, this is that. Yeah, I don't know. Wow, that yeah. was not. Uh, yeah, yeah, you can show. You it can't there. really see too much, but yeah, this is another one. Just as private help wanted, I need help with my Microsoft Office skills. Try to eat healthy at gmail dot com. <laughs> what? <laughs> what an email address! Just, 
<laughs> I've been one just trying to eat healthy. Yeah. <laughs> and so I didn't, I think maybe this was before. And I you're sure that this is the same guy. Uh, yeah. Based on what I saw on the Reddit post and everything, I okay. was like, oh, this is almost definitely him. Um, and so I emailed try to eat healthy at gmail.com um, just to go for a round two. Uh, and I, I made a, <laughs> made a fake Gmail account for uh, a woman named Frida toes. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Classic. You know, just fun. Just, yeah, just sure. having some fun. Yeah. Sure. yeah, yeah. Fun. Um, yeah. Just responded to the email basically. And then again, I, this is how I knew it was him for sure. Cause I wasn't entirely sure. Uh, he said, hi, thank you for your email. Send telephone number. I'm very careful who I meet. I have had sick, disturbed men reply. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so this is a common. Yeah. Yeah. This oh, time he sure. signs off as Tony Roberto. So Tony Roberto Buccino. There's all these names that he's right. using. Okay. Um, and uh, I gave a, I made a whole fake number. I used like a fake uh, a number generator. And uh, <laughs> then I was like, I just tried to ask some questions and stuff. Like I was like, what do you mean sick, disturbed men? What's happening? And then he sent a message that freaked me out. He said, uh, yes, it's a man uh, that's like very sick, wired wrong, no friends, text me for something to do. I will catch him soon. It will be very bad. We'll be on the news. <laughs> and I was like, okay, maybe I should stop doing this. <laughs> <laughs> Like, I don't want to be on the news unless I'm winning an award. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I just, uh, um, so I said, oh my goodness, that makes me a little worried to tutor you, to be honest. <laughs> I don't like violence. Uh, and he said, don't email again. We'll take to police station. We will find you. Oh my God. Whoa. Yeah. Now, do you think this guy has ever actually met up with anybody or is this just like a, he likes to have people text him and stuff? That's well, what it feels like to me. Yeah. I, uh, I joined the Tony spot. There's a, I guess the original Tony spotting group got deleted or something. Cause the new one's called Tony spotting to the return. <laughs> <laughs> there's 1.1 1. 1, directed by members. Danny Boyle. There's over a thousand members in this group. Everybody just takes turns posting his weird ass signs all over the neighborhoods and stuff. Um, and so I've learned through that, that basically he's been doing this for years. He'll just put up different versions of signs around Toronto. People have like, uh, re sort of tried to report him to the police and stuff, but what he's doing is not technically illegal. Right. It just seems like he has some kind of weird foot fetish for specifically older women. Uh, but he, he, uh, there also seems to be some weird thing involving like he doesn't like somebody tried to uh, recommend that he go on fet life. That's what they told they said. Right. And uh and he was he was like, it's not a fetish. You know, he was just very defensive about it. So it's uh yeah, truly bizarre. Uh, it was yeah, it was like the first month I was in in Toronto. I was like, Wow, welcome, welcome to the big city. Getting wow. threats from from creepy old men. I mean, of my own. Like I, I, <laughs> I, I, I sort of invited I him invited yeah. him for sure. For sure. I'm I'm I I'm, went to him. Uh I went to him. I'm a very sick, disturbed man. <laughs> This brought that on so myself. there's no evidence of anybody who has actually met up with him, at least it, that you've seen. Yeah, yeah. People people do spot him putting up signs. Oh, in okay. Person sometimes. Um, yeah. Uh, it's uh, there's a whole community. It's very funny. That it's is funny crazy. to stumble upon it. Yeah, because I truly was like, oh, it's just a weird sign. It's just a single weird. There's a whole community of a, over a thousand people. In so Toronto. what's the end goal for him? Is he like trying to get pictures of feet? Like, is he trying to say like, oh, I'm not going to give you a pedicure, but then he's also doing Microsoft office and walking things like, so I'm, I'm just that I'm trying to wrap my head around That's like the what the thing. end goal is. Here. Yeah. I, I have not really been able to figure that out. That's that's what I wanted to do with that email. I wanted to just be a little bit more um, like because the first time I was just trying to fuck with him. Right. And the second yeah. time I was like trying to actually get some information. And then he immediately tried to threaten to find me with the police as if as if I'm the one. <laughs> right. I'm the one doing fucked up stuff. But yeah. So uh, crazy. Yeah. Pretty nuts. Um, wow. I also. Uh, yeah. That's uh, that's my block. I mean, I, I guess he didn't specifically block my email or phone number or whatever but he did sort of vaguely threaten to to kill you to, to kill you sort of, yeah so that's sort of a block of a, yeah it's mean, a pretty big block you sort of chose you, to block sort of yourself the, from talking the, to yeah, the so. ultimate block tail really yeah. in a way um yeah you're blocked from breathing yeah. uh, which is tough yeah wow that is i mean you always have great stories for us that's a that's another really good one i i uh we just don't have i don't have that in our neighborhood, I, we need a 
We need a Tony around here. Something. Maybe we don't. Who knows? Mm. Uh, yeah, you're probably better off without. I mean, there's, <laughs> there, I'm sure there's some creeps in the neighborhood. There's just less foot traffic, you know, so people yeah. aren't putting up as many signs in the True. suburbs. I do love a good crazy sign. Uh, we've got a good listener block this week. This one comes in from Mr. Goals, who you may recognize as a contributor to the BP mailbag very often. Mr. Goals writes, hey, Blocked Boys, Stefan mentioned Mikey Miles this week. This is uh, oh, no. this block tale is from a, a few weeks ago. <laughs> mentioned Mikey Miles this week, and I haven't looked into him other than a few posts, but I realized that a guy who my best friend knows and sends me stuff about is kind of like the European version of Mikey, aside from like the stalking stuff. Um, but more that he sees a woman and immediately falls in love with her. That's kind of his like comparison to Mikey. I don't know if this guy wants to be an actor, but he definitely wants to be famous. For example, he was on the set of a Hollywood movie they shot in Europe recently, and he's been on some crappy dating advice show where three older women were trying to give him advice, and he was always just nodding like someone who didn't register a single word. He's trying to be a Catholic influencer with zero (laughs) success, plus he shares a million stupid posts. He's always whining about wanting a partner and his big heart breaks. And he sometimes even posts photos of or with women he meets with captions like I'm crazy about you. Maybe she's the one. So last week he shared a post that he's going on a date without a photo, but tagging a woman and then later shared an Instagram story of a video selfie of kissing her, which I couldn't see because I watched one of his stories previously where he filmed himself struggling to do three pull-ups and then he blocked my Finsta. And as they finished kissing, apparently she said something like, God, that was awful. And he still <laughs> uploaded it. <laughs> I'm not as fascinated by these people like my friend is with him or Stefan with Mikey, but they're truly baffling people. And I thought you would enjoy knowing that they are everywhere. Love the show, Mr. Goals. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Goals. Yeah, there's <laughs> there's incredible. a lot of there's a lot of Mikey's out there. Uh, yeah. the world over. So. I, uh, I love the idea of the woman commenting that the kiss was bad and you're like, yeah. well, whatever. I'm, I'm getting, getting gonna post I got anyway. yeah. <laughs> to show my pals. Uh, <laughs> if you want to send in a listener block, you can do so at blocked at blockparty.com or you can fill out the form on our website. If you want to donate to the show, it's patreon.com slash block party. $5 a month gets you access to three bonus episodes every single month. Last week, we just released the first episode of season three of BP D and D Jesse and DB from YKS are joining us for a truly unhinged season of Dungeons and Dragons with our faithful DM, Josh Burgle. Uh, it's fantastic. It's up there. We also have ad free episodes. If you hate the ads uh, that play before the show, we also have merch discounts, exclusive discord, all that stuff. Patreon.com slash block party. You can also follow us on Twitter, and Instagram at block party pod. And if you want to see this episode, the video is up on our YouTube page at block party. We're also on blue sky at block party. And if you like the show, please tell a friend. Okay, we're here at the end of the episode. That means it's time for the top three. Three, two, one. Three, two, one. Uno, 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 uno. Mustard. Three. Socks. Two. Girlfriends. Uno, 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 uno. Alistair, your top three, please. Um. So, uh... I I uh I got fired this week. Oh shit! Oh, <laughs> sorry so, to hear about sorry. that. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, it's okay. I just um. Did you so, like the job? Are you sad you got fired, or is it like a happy moment? Um, I'm gonna just not comment on any of it. Understand? <laughs> understand? <laughs> I, I I know exactly yeah. why you're not. Yeah, I understand. It's not gonna comment on any of that, but I just thought um it would be good to do um just like top three jobs that you've had. Does oh that wow! Work? Does that okay. work? Simple. Yeah. yeah. Does that work? Yeah, that works. Yeah. Absolutely. Top three jobs we've had. Okay. Yeah, yeah that's good. Yeah. All right. Um, Stefan's never had a job, so it's tough on. for him. But uh, rich, <laughs> w- rich, rich parents. But um, <laughs> he's. Uh, but yeah, that'll be good. Okay, uh, Alistair, you want to give us your number three? My number three. Um, so yeah, that would be when I worked uh, at this uh, the the tea, the tea house in Stanley Park. Oh, look oh. at you! Yeah, fancy. Yeah, it was. Uh, I mean, I was a bus boy there, mm, so less fancy. Yeah, and I was truly so so bad at the job. <laughs> <laughs> truly so i have i have adhd that was that was kind of uh the job that made me realize i really have adhd because i just could not focus on even like cleaning certain places you know i would just like completely forget about rooms of the restaurant mm. and just only clean one room over and over again people got really mad at me there was a woman who i worked with 
<laughs> her name was Tempest, and she got so mad at me. Okay. And that was right near, right near when I had to stop working there. Yeah, it felt like a metaphor or something. <laughs> I don't know. But so wow. how? So you didn't last long. Yeah, but that was. Did so, you get fired, or did you just say I can't do this? Um, I got I got a different job. Um, that okay. I actually am gonna put lower on the 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 top three. <laughs> okay, all right. So um, we'll, we'll leave it there. Yeah, yeah. Okay. But, yeah. <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> Sounds like I'm Steph, in witness protection. Yeah. <laughs> I just got fired from a job, but I cannot speak about it. Also, this job I will not be speaking about. Yeah. Uh, Stefan, what's your number three? I I will say. So I worked at the the toilet warehouse for like on and off for like oh eight or nine years, I think. And I I did genuinely like it a lot, but I had two positions there. And one of them was uh, working in receiving in the warehouse, which is like <laughs> that job. I mean, that job is so it's not easy, but it's just like it's and it's not relaxing is the wrong word, too, I guess. But like it is literally <laughs> I know you just, find receiving generally pretty of easy. Cor- of course. Yeah. <laughs> um, but it is just like you're on a forklift and you're just like stacking stuff out in the yard or you're like, it's fucking fun, you know? And it, it is fun kind of like being in charge of like organizing like how everything's like set up back in the warehouse and like it was it was an enjoyable job. Um and it was a good job to sort of like turn your mind off and like think about like anything else and just drive a forklift around for eight hours a day. So um yeah, I think working and receiving at the at the toilet warehouse, number three. Uh sweet. Uh number three for me. I've had some good jobs, but uh, I would say number three is like I've refereed hockey, umpired baseball, and refed soccer. Yeah. And I would say like all of those are kind of good. I know that people say that referees are like sports cops or whatever, and that's fine if people want to lean into hating me or whatever. I would say refereeing hockey is the best because it's just like you get to go out for a skate. So it's yeah. like, it's fun. You're just like, you're out skating, and yeah, you have to call some penalties or whatever, but you just like get out on the ice, you skate you know, mix it up with the fellas. I like to get in fights with guys, like not fist fights, but like if guys jaw at me, it's like a fun <laughs> kind of like, I'll just jaw at them back and I'm a nice. professional comedian. So yeah, it's, yeah. it's pretty fun. I usually win. Uh, so yeah, I, that's definitely like a, and then, yeah, when I was a kid, I umpired baseball and ref soccer. And I like both of those too. Uh, so yeah, I would say that's probably my number three, any of those, but hockey in particular is the most fun. Nice. We also, I also used to, ref ball hockey at UBC and oh, wow. some of the and some of the lower divisions were really really bad so me and the other refs there was like kind of five of us that would ref all these games we like invented uh like <laughs> We're fully interfering with the game, but we like invented this game where you would get a certain amount of points for getting the ball through your legs. <laughs> so like if someone like iced the iced the ball or like shot it down the floor, you would try to like get it through your legs. That's so good. And so like if it came through your legs, normal frontwards, it was one point. If if you were facing the ball and you crossed your legs and it was still went through your legs, then you'd get two points. And then if you did it backwards, you got three points. And then the backwards crossover was four points. And we would fully just like the ball would hit us. Cause we're like, you yeah. kind of look like Michael Jackson. You're like kind of jumping, jumping, doing like a 180, it. doing yeah. like a twist. <laughs> and the ball hits your feet. And the people would be like, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> and uh, it was only for the low level divisions yeah. that we would yeah. do it. But it was super fun. <laughs> that reminds me. Did you see the Vancouver Whitecaps game? Oh, the ref yesterday. The ref. Oh my, the ref getting in the wear. What's the ref doing? Body check the player right at the end of the game. Really? It was absolutely insane. Yeah, Yeah. you're going to watch it. Like, yeah, it's really funny. Like, he was already having a really bad game. He gave LA a super soft penalty. Yeah. And uh, he just, yeah, he was really reffing horribly. And then, yeah, it was the end of the game. There was a corner. The ball got deflected outside the 18. And one of the Whitecaps guys was like kind of running onto it to volley it. And yeah. he just like body checked him. The ref body what? checked him. And then LA went down the other end and scored. Yeah. Because oh they ended up getting God. pulled back from offside. But it was yeah. uh, it was crazy. It was just so hard. The, re- the, uh, the Whitecaps coach got 
sent off. He looked like he was about to fight the ref. It was yeah. insane. He, oh, the white... I just looked this up. Did you see uh, Sartini's quote? Yeah, the quote was amazing. Oh he my asked, god! <laughs> he asked if all the reporters uh, were were. He first asked to make sure that all their microphones were on. Yeah, and then he said, "Don't find the players. Uh, don't ask the players about the referees. I'm going to take all the fines." And he said, "The refereeing was so bad that if the ref showed up uh, face down in False Creek, you'd probably think it was me who did it." <laughs> <laughs> hey, Danny rocks sick uh, he looks like Mr. Bean he does kind of look like Mr. like the Italian yeah, Mr. Bean yeah I love it yeah I love it yeah Alistair you're number two number two um, I'm gonna say the uh, I did uh, social media management for uh, blind tiger comedy in uh, in Vancouver that was fun that was nice I got nice. to do a lot of free improv classes and sketch classes and work with fun people and it was good and are yeah. you good at those things now uh, improv and sketch yeah I mean I haven't done improv in a minute but I think I'm decent at stand up. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't take any stand up classes with them, but all the other stuff helped too. So, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Blind Tiger is cool. Mm-hmm. Um, great. Uh, if you don't know, past guest of the show, actually, Tom Hill, uh, one of the co founders of it, and uh, quite a few past guests of this show teach classes there. Uh, they have improv sketch, stand up classes. If you're in Vancouver, great place to learn how to do comedy. Yeah. Not sponsoring me. But they should. <laughs> it's fine. I'll just, I'm throwing it out there. I'm yeah, just no, giving it is them great. a plug. It's and great. if you want to send them that clip and say, look, hey, I gave you a plug on Block Party, which is a sort of a renowned podcast. Yeah. yeah. And you get a little cash out of that. No problem. That'd just kick nice. us 10%. We're I, good. I, would, I would take another free improv class, Tom, if you're listening. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Stefan, you're number two. Back to the the warehouse, I was uh, counter sales for a couple of years after working and receiving. And that was very fun too, because you'd get there. I, I was working like the, God, I think it was like a 5.30 shift. It was like 5 or 5.30. You work like 5 to 2. Yeah. Whoa. So uh, you get there super early and there's like donuts and coffee. And then like the first couple hours of the day before like the rest of like the office gets there, you're just like hanging out with the plumbers who are just coming in before they're working. And it's just like, you're just like shooting the shit about like the Canucks or whatever. And you're, you're drinking coffee, having a donut or whatever. And then oftentimes what would happen is, you know, the plumbers would like come back into the warehouse with you and they'd like pick their own order out and stuff. And it was like super easy. The only thing that was bad about it. And I've said this before is when like homeowners would come in and they were clearly trying to avoid paying for a plumber. So they'd come in and they'd ask the counter sales guys for like plumbing advice and it would be like uh, you would just tell them like hire a plumber, right? Or they would, or they would <laughs> That's come my in plumbing advice. Yeah, or they would come in and bring like a fucking disgusting like toilet part, and be like, do you have like a replacement part for this? And it's oh. like this nat- it's like in like a dripping plastic bag, oh and it's like, God. what are you doing? Just call a fucking oh plumber. God. Like they're just trying to save like. <laughs> 50 bucks basically That's by coming crazy. in and it's just like that was the worst part of it but the rest of it was great <laughs> just, just holding a, f- a disgusting pipe oh. help me <laughs> oh my god that's what it was it was so yeah it was fucked <laughs> uh, so see what i said Stefan. kind of two jobs at the same job mm-hmm. well i had another job that, but, that and, uh, I, i'm choosing I'm, not to list because i'm just I, joking you know, Stefan. Yeah. i don't care <laughs> i know i know defensive <laughs> yep oh I, I did have another job um <laughs> My my number two is uh, when I was younger. Somehow, I uh, I was a music critic, uh, so I I Whoa. wrote for this uh, wrote for this website. It was a wrestling website, and then they expanded into being a pop culture website. And so I just applied, and I I was young. I was like eighteen, maybe seventeen or eighteen. Um, and then what I used to do was I would, when I wrote for them, cause it wasn't wrestling was really the main focus. So like writing about music for them, not that many people paid attention to it, but what I used to do is I would send out the reviews to bands like labels and stuff and be like, Hey, if you want to use this in a press kit or whatever, like I reviewed your band's album. And then I sent it to Bedlam Society who manage Alexis on Fire and City in Color and whatever. And they were like, oh, we're actually trying to like launch this music critic thing on our site. You should come and work for us. And then I did. And it was amazing. Like I got so many free CDs, so many free concert tickets. I wrote for them for a couple of years. They ended up shutting the site down because the management side got too big. Um but yeah, it was really fun. Uh, I got paid okay, not great, but you, yeah, you're kind of like you're just getting free albums all the time and free concert tickets, and it was a good, uh, yeah, it was a good job. Um, Alistair, you're number one. Number one. So I'm gonna combine 
because I, I did this job at two different companies, but it was like a very similar experience of both. But I worked essentially at a kayak shop uh, when I was a teenager. And then when I went to university in the summers and then one, one more summer when I moved to Vancouver um, and uh, it was awesome. I actually, speaking of like the Whitecaps, I uh, I got to do, the, there was, they had this initiative called Bell Outside the Box. Oh they'd have, yeah, yeah. They'd have a Whitecaps player come and like try to do your job with you. Yes, so, yes. Marcel de Jong of the, <laughs> of the Canadian national team and the Vancouver wow. Whitecaps for a short time. He, uh, he came and I taught him how to kayak and paddleboard. Nice. Yeah, that's cool. He fun. seems like a nice guy. He really was. Yeah, it was yeah. awesome. Yeah. Uh, so that was that was probably my favorite job. So you were like renting out kayaks and paddle boards? Yeah. And then I, I, w- I did like summer camps with kids and taught them how to do all this stuff. And and uh, yeah, mostly it was just like a really good group of, uh, I don't know, like teenagers and people in their early 20s. And we all go on like camping trips up uh, up in the Burrard Inlet and stuff like that. Nice. Yeah, yeah it was awesome. So that, that was, sounds pretty sick. That was a, that Maybe was you should job. do that again. <laughs> quit comedy be a kayak man well i think the thing is now i am 28 so there would there would always be somebody who was around my age who would come back and like be a manager or something and uh i let me tell you the vibes working at a kayak <laughs> shop <laughs> as a teenager versus as a 28 year old could not be more <laughs> yeah that's probably a good yeah. point yeah. yeah it's like when you, yeah. you manage a mcdonald's basically it's like yeah. kind of the yeah same yeah. thing yeah it's tough i get that yeah. stefan you're number one i'm gonna say the Stupid bullshit I'm currently doing right now, which is hey, this oh, podcast and the, an and the stream. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to count that as a job, I think, because it is. It's definitely a job. It is. It's like what I do to live. So it's awesome. Yeah. It's that's awesome. this and the, and the stream. It's a lot of fun. I mean, uh, you know, I can't complain. It's uh, I have a, a lot of free time, which is nice. But yeah, no, it's uh, it's a good time. I'm liking it. Nice. Yeah. Uh, yeah. My number one is the same as well. Sweet. Uh I, I, you know, I will specifically say doing this podcast to make myself look better than Stefan, okay. who also included the stream. No, I'm just kidding. But yes, currently this like weird job I've carved out for myself where I do like six different jobs where I have yeah. like three podcasts mm-hmm. and I do curling commentary and some writing still about curling and being a stand up. Oh, all a- of those a- things. Adam told me he was woken up by you doing curling commentary. And yeah, that's he a loved tr- it. Yeah. That's a true fact. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He was the yeah, Adam Christie past guest, stayed at my house. I'm actually wearing his shirt right now. This is uh oh nice. That's what oh, Adam yeah, always yeah. does on stage because he's got freakishly long it. arms yeah. and he does the uh but yeah, we he was here to open for Randy Feltface, who was extremely funny. And uh yeah, uh he, he stayed over at my house and I told him I was like, I probably won't see you in the morning because I have curling commentary at 8 a.m. or whatever. <laughs> Yeah, that was, I didn't know you guys were going out. You told me you were going out for drinks, but you didn't specify yeah, that it was with her. That her was with Adam. That was, and Dan came out too. Oh, that was a fun time. We'll have to have time. Adam back on and talk about it because it was really funny. <laughs> so, yeah, it was a good oh, time. yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Like something crazy happened? I mean, some stuff happened. Yeah. It was. It was a lot of fun. At, when we left, Adam said, this is the worst night of my life. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, then, yes, we will yeah. have Adam back on to talk about it. Uh, thank you, Alistair, uh, for being here. Great to have you back on the show, as always. Uh, before we go, anything you'd like to plug? Um, well, speaking of jobs, after I got fired, I am now technically like full-time stand-up comedy. Yep. So uh, if, uh, if you see me coming to your city to do a show, Please come to the show. <laughs> buy a ticket so I can merch. eat and live. So, yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, or if, if uh, I don't know, if you live somewhere else and you would like to come, me to come and perform there, I have a little email list in my uh, like link tree, Instagram bio, or whatever. Uh, so yeah, fill that out and I'll try to come and perform wherever you are. Nice, That'd be yeah. awesome. People can follow you. You're just at Alistair Ogden. Alistair Ogden. Yeah, beautiful. Yeah. I'm. I'm. The, I found this out. I, I googled myself recently. Congratulations! For the first time in a while. Yep. Um, I'm pretty much the only Alistair Ogden that comes up on Google, except there is one listing for a Harry Potter, like homoerotic Harry Potter fan fiction character. Oh, cool! Named, also named, named Alistair Alistair Ogden. Yeah, okay. Exactly Whoa. the same spelling. So. Yeah. So maybe it's time for you to kind of get in with that community because that could be very lucrative. I'm like, did Mr. Bacino write this? <laughs> <laughs> so there you go. Come see Alistair in your town. And if you live in Vancouver, Alistair, you said you have a show there in a couple of days. Yeah. November 15th at the Martin. So it might be sold out when this comes out. That would be nice. But if not, <laughs> if not, if not, if you go to the page and you see that it's not sold out, buy a ticket, go see Alistair. Yes. He's very funny. Follow Alistair on Instagram at Alistair Ogden. And you're a TikTok Alistair Ogden as well. Yeah. 
Wonderful. Uh, you can follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and we do also have a TikTok now as well at Block Party Pod. You can watch this episode on YouTube at Block Party. You can follow us on Blue Sky at Block Party. You can donate to the show, patreon.com slash block party. Thank you so much for listening. We'll see you back here next week. Goodbye. Goodbye. Bye. Bye.